Let's talk about Chris Jones and his hilarious appearance on the New Heights podcast, the final Chiefs and Jets injury report, as well as keys to victory for Kansas City. And then I'm going to try to answer the question about Justin Ross and why he's had so few passes thrown his way so far this season by giving some thoughts of my own, as well as looking at the coach's film. So let's talk about it. But first, how about those All right, first up, Chris Jones was the featured guest on the New Heights podcast today. Go listen to it as soon as humanly possible because the entire thing was a great listen full of hilarious stories and jokes. However, I found this particular segment about Chris Jones using Joe Burrow as motivation all off season long to be pretty entertaining. He talked about missing some key sacks on Burrow in the first AFC championship matchup that the Bengals did win. And then Burrow proceeded to share a post on Instagram with lyrics from a Drake and Lil Baby song that said, Cartier Glass I won't even peek at you. And then the second photo showed Chris Jones on the ground after missing one of those key sacks. And Chris basically took it personal, using that as motivation all off season long. Then the AFC Championship rematch happened. Big time moment, fourth quarter, big drive. Who's sacking Joe Burrow? I needed it. I needed it. I wanted nothing more than just that moment again, because I'm like, in my whole offseason, I'm training, thinking about Joe Burrow. I had them paint pictures of Joe Burrow <laughs> and the dummies I was slapping. I swear to God. We always put the uh, the offensive linemen's pictures the on, the, uh, yeah. on the trash cans. I had yeah, one on the on dummies, cans. bro. I had I, Joe Burrow on the dummies, bro. <laughs> and I could just picture it now. Chris Jones slapping this fake dummy with Burrow's face on it during his offseason workouts and found that to be pretty hilarious. Next up, let's talk Chiefs versus Jets. Why Justin Ross has gotten so few targets. Look at the final injury report and more. But first... I gotta thank the sponsor of today's video, Boulevard Brewing Company. That's right, the local Kansas City brewery that serves the best beer I've ever had, Tank 7, has partnered up with the channel in celebration of the Chiefs being back in action for the 2023 NFL season. And this is such an easy company to promote because this has been my go-to beer since I've turned 21 and 11 years later, Boulevard still reigns supreme and sits on the throne. I drink a Tank 7 or some form of a Boulevard beer nearly every single live stream on game day and make sure to pick some up anytime I head over to a friend's house to hang out. This summer, I've been stuck on their grapefruit wheats, but honestly, I'm not picky at all when it comes to Boulevard, whether it's their unfiltered wheat, the best light beer out there, their 89 lager, or maybe a seltzer is your preference like my wife, and if so, their cork seltzers are not only extremely refreshing, but a very popular choice for many. On top of that, we had our first ever HBTC get together to celebrate the draft being in KC back in April on the top floor of their beer hall, the Rec Deck, and it was a freaking awesome time hanging out with some of you guys. My wife and I also just went back there to pick up a care package and Boulevard hooked us up with tons of tailgate gear, beer, and more beer, and I couldn't be more grateful. So if you are of legal drinking age, make sure to get you some Boulevard if they are sold in your area before the next Chiefs game, and let's toast the best beer in the business as we watch the best team in the league stack up these Ws. All right, now with Nick Bolton not practicing all last week or this week, it looks like once again, linebacker Drew Tranquil is the next man up. Defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo didn't feel like the defense skipped a beat with Drew out there filling in, and that's No disrespect to Nick Bolton, who is a tremendously important part of the defense, but Drew did a great job and they didn't pair anything back with him in there compared to Nick normally calling things. And that's impressive because Drew is here as a first year player in a complex system. Linebackers coach Brendan Daly said Drew cares a lot about getting things right, works extremely hard and considering all he had on his plate, filling the shoes of Nick Bolton. He did a great job. Then of course, the goal is for that to continue this week against New York. Daly went on to say that they need to work hard to stop weapons like Garrett Wilson and both of those solid running backs. Brees Hall, who has averaged 5.9 yards per carry in his NFL career, and Dalvin Cook, who is coming off of four straight 1,000 plus yard seasons rushing. He wants to see the linebackers do a great job of recognizing the play action quickly, punching out and finding routes because the team is gonna run Z ball quite a bit. Defensive line coach Joe Cullen said New York's running back duo is as good as they get, and with their physical offensive line, he's telling the Chiefs D-line to expect around 35 runs and then play action off of it. They would also like to keep them limited to as many short runs as possible, which will hopefully help set up lots of third and longs. Third and short isn't ideal with a team who can run the ball this well. However, the Jets have not been great at converting on third downs. Uh, They currently rank dead last in the league, converting third downs only 21.26% of the time. In last week, game though, they were two for 14 on third down, which means they converted only 14% of third downs. Not good. On top of that, the Jets offense is averaging 14 points per game, last in the league, and are also last in total yards. Basically, 
The offense is not playing well, considering it was basically handcrafted for Aaron Rodgers this season. And of course, game one, he tore his Achilles and is out recovering after a successful surgery. Sure, they have some dogs at the running back position. Brees Hall rushed for over 120 yards week one, but has been stifled to less than 30 total yards rushing in the last two games combined. And that's a trend the Chiefs need to focus on continuing. Defensive backs coach Dave Merritt also wants to keep a very close eye on Garrett Wilson, who is great off the release, very quick laterally, and can get into his vertical route just like that. So they've got to slow him down at the line of scrimmage and do their best to eliminate the vertical release. And speaking of defensive backs, Coach Merritt actually did not know that Trent McDuffie is currently the highest graded cornerback per PFF, but he sees all that and more in him. Trent right now, he said, is playing at a very high level. He's one of the smartest DBs he's come across for someone who's going into his second year. And then said that PFF has obviously been watching the film because he's playing some good football for us and quote, we need that. And that is a key for me in this game to get Trent McDuffie and of course, Legereus Sneed and company to continue their momentum of blanketing receivers. Justin Reed is another player I'll be watching as Dave Merritt noted Justin is playing very freely in the secondary and Spags complimented the second year lineman, George Karloftis, who currently has the sixth most pressures in the NFL. He also said Mike Dana is somebody who's playing some great football for the defense as well this season. So those two, as well as Chris Jones, are gonna be looking to wreak havoc on Zach Wilson, who has been sacked eight times this season and thrown four interceptions so far, one of the worst in the NFL. But speaking of Chris Jones, he's currently listed on the injury report with a groin injury of sorts, though Spags didn't seem too concerned. He said that Chris played under 20 snaps against the Bears mainly because of the score and wanted to protect, quote, one of our top players. He did a good job coming back in shape. Cullen has done a good job rotating everyone around and they think Chris will be back up to a higher snap count a bit further into the season. So. Time will tell how much this groin issue will affect Chris and his overall snap count this week, but this isn't a new issue for the CEO of SAC Nation as he's been dealing with groin issues since he ran his 40 at the 2016 NFL Combine. So I would think he should be good to go sooner rather than later. Anyway, the Chiefs defense has been going nuts all season long, allowing just three touchdowns this season. One of them, a garbage time touchdown against the Bears, and they are currently the fourth best in points allowed and sixth in yards allowed, which is honestly terrifying for the rest of the league if the defense can keep this up. Now, as far as the offense is concerned, the Chiefs have some momentum going into this game after putting up 41 against the Bears and looked much like their regular selves out there. The offense is currently ninth in points scored and fifth in total yards per game, despite struggling offensively at times in both week one and week two. I mean, Mahomes is of course the best quarterback in the league. Travis Kelsey is Travis Kelsey, and the young receiving core is starting to come together and establish the trust needed out there with Mahomes. Holmes. Offensive coordinator Matt Nagy noted that time has been great for Rasheed Rice in building his confidence and his timing with Pat. His confidence is much higher now and they want to be able to use his talent and skills accordingly. And regarding Kelsey's touchdown against the Bears, it was obviously yet another play where he went off script to find a weakness in the coverage and Nagy simply complimented Kelsey's innate ability to recognize defenses. On top of that, Mahomes has this extremely almost telepathic-like connection with Kelsey where he knows what Kelsey is gonna do based on the coverage, even though they don't necessarily practice it in advance. Another thing the Chiefs have going for them is that every running back scored at least one touchdown last week against Chicago. And Nagy said every running back brings their own set of strengths that can be utilized at different times throughout the game. And so, quote, we feel really good with all three. Nagy also paid some homage to the Jets defense saying they will be a big time challenge. They play very hard, are physical, and are great on all three levels of the defense. Every week they produce and stress the offense. And so the Chiefs offense has to make sure they come in more than ready. I mean, yeah, the Jets defense may have one of the best cornerback rooms in the league. They also have a talented D line and their defense has only allowed four touchdowns all season, which again is just one more than the Chiefs defense has allowed. Now, New York is in the middle of the road in several defensive rankings, 20th in yards allowed, 22nd in third downs, and have allowed the second most 10 plus play drives. But I honestly think their stats suffer a bit because the defense is out there getting gassed due to the fact that Zach Wilson and company are not really able to establish effective drives and stay on the field. The Jets have punted the ball 17 times. It's like the third worst in the NFL and is an average of 5.6 punts per game. And so the defense is basically out there way more than they would like to be. With all that being said though, New York has been fire defensively in the red zone and are currently tied for fifth with the Chiefs 
and the Ravens, allowing a touchdown only 37.5% of the time their opponent is in the red zone. And one thing I want to see is Mahomes continue to be protected and have time in the pocket because we currently don't know to what extent his recently tweaked ankle is going to limit his mobility out there on the field, and we honestly won't know until we see for ourselves during the game. Donovan Smith is also coming into this game dealing with a rib injury and most likely won't be 100%. On top of that, their backup swing tackle, Prince Tega Winogho, is out on injured reserve, dealing with a torn quad he sustained in the Bears game, and if that wasn't enough, Jawan Taylor is still working on changing up his technique and play style a bit to get flagged less than he has in the first three weeks. He's currently the most flagged player in the NFL with seven and is working on things with offensive line coach Andy Heck, who said that Jawan has been doing things a certain way for so long that it's definitely taken him out of his comfort zone in the process. But at the end of the day, Andy Heck said it's not a difficult coaching point, just quote, move up. So we will see if the league continues to crack down on Taylor or not in this week's game. Either way, flags or no flags on Taylor or anybody else, I think the Chiefs offense is going to continue their momentum from last week, even though this defense is definitely a tougher matchup, but I still have them putting up over 30 points on New York. Meanwhile, the Chiefs defense is going to give Zach Wilson all kinds of hell and keep them around their average points scored per game. And therefore, I currently have the Chiefs winning this game 32 to 13. Now, one thing about the Chiefs offense I have been curious about and something I've been asked a lot about as well is where the heck is Justin Ross. Why isn't he getting more snaps and why isn't he getting the ball thrown his way more? Well, it's a complex situation. And while he did see a pretty big uptick in offensive snaps overall last week, it's most likely because the Chiefs pulled the majority of the starters after the first drive in the third quarter. I mean, even though he was out there for over 30 snaps, I believe he still only saw this one target the entire day with Ross being unable to come down with the catch. A tough one to make anyway, if we're going to be honest. So far on the season, Justin Ross has been targeted twice, catching one of those passes for six yards. However, I pulled all the coaches film on him from the first three weeks of the season and am definitely happy with what I've seen from him on some of these plays like this one, for example, against the Lions. Mahomes never looks his way, but he is definitely open for a nice gain here if Mahomes saw it early enough. It didn't matter, though, because Rasheed Rice made some magic happen here on the scramble drill, and it was still a nice play for the offense. Then on this play here, Mahomes was actually looking Justin's way and would have found him for a considerable gain down the field, but the offensive line blew their protection and Mahomes had to take the check down, which is honestly impressive. He was even able Able to do that. And then on this play here against the Jags, Mahomes was looking to connect with Ross, but Ross slipped. And Mahomes said screw it and took off running up the middle as soon as he saw Justin slip on his route. And while Mahomes ended up firing quickly to Kelsey on this play here, Ross did win his route on the right side and could have been targeted as well. Justin then won his route again here on this play, but Mahomes is already throwing the ball to his most trustworthy sidekick in Travis Kelsey. This next play is a bit of a confusing one to me though, because not only does Ross get open, but it looks like to me, Mahomes sees him and if he would have reacted instantly, that's a potential strike for a touchdown. But by the time Mahomes does and indeed think about it, pressure forces him to basically throw the ball away. And then here later in the game with Gabbard at the helm, he ended up throwing to Sky Moore on the left, but the DB covering Justin slipped on the opposite side of the field and he was indeed open. Now, would Blaine have had enough time to wait for Justin to get open? I'm not sure, which is basically the same thing I see here on this play where Justin once again wins his route up the left sideline. But by the time he does, Gabbard has already thrown the ball to Rasheed Rice on the other side of the field. So in conclusion, you can clearly see Ross has gotten open on several plays, but in some cases, it seems like an issue of trust from Mahomes or maybe a lack of overall reps between the two, which can obviously grow and change over the course of this season. And then in other cases, Ross is open, but it's not the first or second read and Mahomes goes a different direction. Patrick also often looks Kelsey's way for a good reason, though Ross was indeed open on some of those. But then there are indeed other times Mahomes has looked Ross's way yet there was either an unfortunate slip, Patrick hesitated, or the line didn't hold and pressure forced Mahomes to make a change. Therefore, I am happy, I guess, overall by what I've seen so far from Justin Ross in the film, considering he's basically wide receiver five or six on the Chiefs depth chart. And I think it's just a matter of us needing to be patient and Ross to develop more rapport with Mahomes and continuing to show Patrick and the coaches that he can continue getting open. And from there, he's just got to make the most of the opportunities given. And I do think his overall production slash role in this offense will slowly grow over time. But what say you guys? Do you think that Ross will continue to grow in the offense based on what you've seen so far? And Mahomes will start to give him more opportunities sooner rather than later? Or 
do you think it could possibly take until maybe even next season until we see more production from him? Let me know your thoughts either way in the comments down below. And from here, I wanna take a look at the final injury report for Sunday night's game. For the Jets, you have safety Tony Adams, hamstring, He's gonna be out Sunday night against the Chiefs, as well as offensive lineman, one of their guards, Wes Schweitzer. He's in the concussion protocol and is not gonna be able to go. For the Chiefs, there is a very long list of players on this injury report, including heavy hitters like Patrick Mahomes, Isaiah Pacheco, Donovan Smith, the left tackle, among others. But the only two that are actually ruled out is gonna be cornerback Jalen Watson. And because of that, I think seventh round pick, defensive back Nick Jones might actually be active and quite possibly playing in this game. The only other person who is out is no surprise, that's linebacker Nick Bolton with his ankle, ankle sprain. He has not practiced this week at all or last week at all, and he's gonna be out. So again, Drew Tranquil is gonna be the next man up. Uh, Noah Gray, who was ill on Wednesday and Thursday, did fully participate today, Friday, and will play in Sunday's game, per the words of Coach Reed. And the only other two who were limited all week is gonna be Chris Jones with the groin sprain spasm that he has going on. He should be playing. And then wide receiver Kadarius Tony with the toe issue he's been dealing with. He was limited all week again, but he should also be playing. The question for Chris Jones and Kadarius Tony for me is, how many snaps are they actually going to get in this game? And with all that being said, let me know your thoughts on this final injury report, as well as Chris Jones's appearance on the New Heights podcast, my prediction of the game, as well as the coaches film we looked at with Justin Ross and his ability to get open at times. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.